Hello and welcome to the first 10 minutes of Stronghold Kingdoms on iPad. Today we're going through the tablet version, but it's essentially the same as the mobile build. Uh, we'll be looking through the tutorial, a little look at the world map and some basic gameplay concepts. Uh, but yeah, let's get to it. Um, first off, we asked people if they played King Kingdoms before, because we've got hundreds of thousands of people that are still playing it. So if you've got an account, you can log straight in and do your own thing on your own worlds. Uh, for everyone else, we will um, put you in the right place and um, sort of hold your hand a little bit through the, at least the basis of the game, so you know what to expect. So we're greeted by the tutorial guy. Um, we're going to be taken to Australia because the game's currently only available there. So we scroll through the world map. As you can see, um, this is a global conflict world. So it's the entire world itself. Um, all these countries you can place villages in, attack from, build alliances within. Uh, but yeah, we're going to start in Australia. So maybe on the southeast coast. It's just giving us a generic Lord number because um, you can create a proper account later on or mature this one into a proper Kingdoms account, but initially we'll just give you a temporary name to get you going. So first off, we're gonna learn about popularity. Popularity um, takes people to your castle, gives you peasants who produce food, produce resources, um, help you build castles, help you dominate the world and sort of achieve that global, global domination that everyone wants deep inside. Uh, so we're going to start by placing an apple orchid for food to feed our peasants, um, which also obviously generates some popularity because people like to be fed. Uh, we're going to place that close, as close as possible to the granary to generate the maximum number of resources. As you see, the number changes as you get further away. So place that, a couple seconds for it to build, just like in a regular RTS. We're going to collect some apples as our little rewards. Next, we're going to move on to wooden stone. Um, we're going to hit the build bring it as close as possible to the trees. Um, ideally you want it a woodcutter's hut placed somewhere between the um, stockpile where your wood, stone, and iron are all stored and the trees. You can't place it too far away because otherwise the woodcutters won't be able to get there in a reasonable time. Uh, but yeah, you want to place it like here. Again, a couple of seconds to build the building. Next up is a quarry. We're going to place that on the stone obviously because you can't mine grass for stone. Uh, but we're going to place it in the corner up here so it's close to the um, stockpile again um, and that's how we'll generate the most stone. It's the most efficient place to, to suit it. So collect a little rewards. Next up should be research. Um, so there's vast tetries in the game. Uh, for the purposes of the tutorial we're just going to go with the arts research um, and that's in the education branch but there's also industry, military, farming, and um, various levels to all of the researchers. So you'll be able to create new troops, new buildings in the game, all that kind of stuff, and then level those up to get higher levels, to get better troops, uh, maybe like stone structures instead of wooden structures for castles, and that kind of thing. So that'll be ready in about 30 seconds. For now, we'll move on through the tutorial. So we just got a research point. Those are used to research new things, and you can get those just through regular gameplay. Some honor was collected there. Honor plays into the meta game. Um, you'll have glory races, which are kind of affected by that. But honor is essentially kind of um, your major end game sort of currency in kingdoms, if that makes sense. So it also plays into ranking. So we're going to rank up from village idiot uh, to bumpkin, um, and then you can go on to uh, peasant and slightly more sort of illustrious titles like Knight, um, Baron, Crown Prince eventually. We're going to review a strategy card first. So uh, this woodmanship card will give us extra wood production, but there's other things that can be affected such as your castle defenses, um, you know, what knights can charge for towards the end of a siege, um, your production of other materials in the game, um, your how fast builders are built, all that kind of stuff you can play strategy cards for. And you can redeem these strategy cards for free just through playing the game regularly. So next up in the game is popularity. So the concept of popularity is that you become more popular through giving your peasants more food, more beer, um, and lower taxes. And you adjust these things accordingly so you have enough gold at all times, you have enough food, your supplies of weaponry are all sort of at the regular level so that you kind of balance your parent, peasant's popularity off against your resources essentially in the game. So for the purpose of the tutorial, we're gonna give people um, some triple rations, which is 
way too generous. Um, we're gonna lower their taxes to a medium bribe. So we're actually paying the peasants to stick around, which is not sustainable at all. Um, so we've made the peasants much happier. There's one more arriving in nine minutes and um, those will keep going until we hit our max, which is dictated by the number of hovels we have in the village. So next up is the castle. Right now we've got a tiny little keep defended by a pretty pathetic small wooden wall. Um, we're gonna go fix that by plugging a hole in that. Um, we've obviously only got access to um, wooden structures at the moment, but once you get further into the game, you can get stone structures, castle traps like oil, um, bestillers, those kind of things. So again, we're gonna play another strategy card just to speed up the process. So we're protected from what well, is no doubt an impending attack. So your village is one of thousands of others in the world. Um, and this is a first kind of look at the world map. So while we have soft launched the iOS version in Australia and you can only play in this region at the moment, um, the game, at least on this map, expands to the entire world itself. So we've got, you know, a sort of medieval rendition of the United States and obviously Europe over here. Um, and you can play in game worlds that just have these countries, but um, this one, it's just a, it's the world, it's a global world. Um, so yeah, to give us some context, we'll zoom back to our village. Um, and we're being attacked by a few lads to test our defenses. Okay, so I'll hit the menu button. Um, this is a report screen where we basically get to see who's attacked you, whether it's a player or AI. Um, players are not allowed to attack you for the first three days, uh, just to kind of protect you from all the, you know, angry people out there. Uh, but AI will attack you and um, throughout the course of your time in Kings, you'll be attacked by a mix of like bandit camps, AI lords, other players, that kind of thing. So we just view the battle. We can see that it's a few uh, small peasants coming up to our uh, our keep, which will shoot at them. Um, one down, two down. Only Jeff left. Jeff's dead. Poor Jeff. Um, so that was the report. Um, obviously, grander battles will look a bit more significant later on in the game. So if we just look at a replay here of an example of a proper siege, we've got catapults in the corner, um, archers taking out our tower archers, pikemen trying to make their way to the keep. Um, the kind of goal of every siege is to get to the keep and if they reach the keep they win. Um, it looks like in this case no one's going to get anywhere near our, uh, our central keep, but we'll see how it goes. So you'll probably be able to build something like that later in the game when you've um, not necessarily got multiple villages, but you've advanced the research a little bit, you've got access to stone structures, you can see that they've got towers there, they've got um, wooden platforms, archers in the towers, the great towers, which is the most advanced in the game. They've got some barracks in there as well. Not too many traps, but um, I can see one all put there. And these are just kind of the rewards that you collect for having completed the tutorial. Thanks for watching our first 10 minutes of Strong Kingdoms on iOS and Android. It'll be coming to App Store and Google Play soon. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more Kingdoms videos and look forward to another video next Thursday.